let's talk a little bit more about the person of Mashiach. Who is it? How, how, what are the identifiers? So this person, who is a descendant of King David and does these things like bring the Jews back to Israel and uh, build the temple in its place, he's proficient in the written and oral Torah. He will not only return the Jewish people to, to their roots and, and their observance of Torah and mitzvahs, but even will, em will emphasize and uh, galvanize the, the nations of the world, the Gentile nations, to observe their moral code, the seven Noahide laws, that they're instructed to follow. So it's not only the Jewish people, but also his, his rule or his, his influence will extend to the nations of the world as well. He will be scrupulously observant and observe the highest standards of Torah. He will defend religious principles and repair breaches in their observance. And above all, Mashiach will be heralded as a true Jewish king, a person who leads the way in the service of God, yet totally humble and enormously inspiring. In every generation, there's always someone who's qualified for the job. And if God determines that this is the right time, then that person assumes that role. So every generation has its Mashiach who is worthy. Should that time be right, that person gets the go-ahead. The, go the miracles, um, miracles do not make a prophet and they do not make a messiah either. So a, a person doing miracles does not necessarily at all give him more, more or less uh, authority or uh, fulfillment as this uh, Mashiach figure. Um, I want to, because we're talking about the who, I want to just briefly mention, because this is not at all the, the subject of, of the class, but the founder of Christianity. If you could think of one person in our history who either himself aspired to be Messiah or that people perhaps uh, thought was, would be the founder of Christianity. Now, I just want to briefly touch on why he definitely is not, and definitely was not. Okay? We're not going to go verse and chapter. That's not the point of tonight's talk. But just almost parenthetically, why Jews did not and continue not to, and never will, accept um, the founder of Christianity as our Messiah, as the Messiah. Um, number one, he wasn't a prophet. Okay? The, in the laws of prophecy, in order for prophecy to function, the, the prophecy can only function when the Holy Land is inhabited by a majority of world Jewry. So prophecy can only exist when the most, most of Jews in the world are living in the land of Israel. Now the time of Ezra, which is 300 BCE, the majority of the Jewish people refused to move from Babylon back to Israel. So prophecy ended with the passing of the last prophets of that time, Haggai, Zechari, and Malachi, that was the end of prophecy, over 300 years before the founding, uh, founder of Christianity was even born. So he wasn't a prophet, that's for sure. Mashiach has to be a prophet, he wasn't a prophet. That's fair enough. Number, number two, you have to be descendant of King David. Well, according to them, he has no father. Right? His father is uh, God, right? virgin birth. So if he has no father, he has no way to transfer that lineage. So. Okay, so he has no father. He's not a descendant of King David. Even if you want to say, okay, let's say, let's take Joseph, adopted father. All right, let's say theoretically, we'll take we'll take his lineage. Well, um, Matthew, uh, one of the Gospels, so he elaborates at the beginning, right at the beginning of the book, um, about the genealogy of the founder of Christianity, and one of the one of the people that are mentioned is a king, uh, Jeconia. Uh, who in, in the book of uh, Yirmiyahu, of Jeremiah, was cursed that none of his descendants could ever sit as king upon uh, the throne of David. So even if you want to count the adopted father, Joseph, um, it wouldn't work because his, uh, his lineage 
back in the day was, was cursed that no, none of his descendants would ever sit on David's throne. Okay? In multiple times throughout the Gospels, uh, he's mentioned as breaking the commandments, right, or saying that they're not applicable. Uh, all throughout John, in John he violates the Sabbath. The Pharisees say he doesn't observe the Sabbath. They get upset. Um, and the main prophecy fulfillment that they claim that he uh, had, uh, virgin birth, crucifixion, suffering servant that they mentioned in Isaiah, are all either mistranslations or just corruptions of actual prophecies that were never meant as messianic prophecies. You know, I, I may have mentioned the story before, or the sort of analogy that, that's given, is that there's a, there's a story of a guy who's, who's walking in the woods, and he sees, you know, on one tree, a, an arrow, and it's directly through a bullseye. Wow, that must be an amazing archer. And he goes a, a bit more through the forest, and he sees on another tree, bullseye. Right? Arrow directly through the middle. And again, a few more feet, he walks another hundred yards, sees another. Bullseye! He thinks, wow, this, this archer must be incredible. He comes to a clearing, an open area, and he sees the archer. He sees the archer actually like winding up his bow. And he says to him, how in the world did you nail it every single time? He said, very simple. I wind up my bow, I hit the tree, and I draw the bullseye around it. <laughs> and many of their, of the quote-unquote prophecy fulfillment that has come about in their scripture, that they elaborate on in their scripture, were never meant as messianic prophecies. They shoot an arrow, like, okay, this happened, so then they look back, backtrack it in what they call the Old Testament, and find where it was fulfilled, where, where, this, where this figure was, was fulfilling a prophecy that was prophesied from ancient days. Meanwhile, that was never even meant as a prophecy. That was never even meant for the sign. They're not even talking about it. It's talking about a completely different topic. So those are, those are some of the key reasons. Again, we're not going to go chapter and verse. That's not the point. Just parenthetically to know and plus, the major things that Mashiach will bring. What's the major thing? You ask a Jew. If you look at through our tradition, very cursory look. What's the major things that Mashiach is going to bring? Rebuild the temple, ingather the exiles, and bring world peace. What happened after this individual died? The exact opposite. The temple was destroyed. The Jewish people were exiled. And perhaps no person in history has more Jewish blood on their hands than this individual. Whether that's what he intended or not, the point is that a, 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 large, a large segment of anti-Semitism in the last 2,000 years has been done in his name. Again, I'm not necessarily saying that he wanted it or that the people who did it were really uh, following in his name, but nonetheless, there's been uh, far from world peace coming about from, from this particular figure. So the exact opposite of everything that we're looking for in Mashiach, he fulfilled. He fulfilled the exact opposite of what we're looking for. That's why he's not accepted and he won't be accepted. Okay, parentheses over.